What do you say to the critics that say the demands are too high? I say wake up. <laughs> Welcome back to the Electric Rager channel. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button for more news in the world of electric vehicles. Today, we're diving into a critical issue that's impacting Detroit auto workers and automakers alike. The question on everyone's mind is, what kind of raise can Detroit afford to give auto workers? Well, it turns out that the answer might depend partly on when American car buyers fully embrace electric vehicles. The United Auto Workers strike has now entered its third week, with tensions escalating as factory workers down tools at two more assembly plants owned by GM and Ford. Despite the strikes, there have been few recent signs of progress in the union's negotiations with Detroit's automakers. Interestingly, while President Biden showed support for the UAW, Tesla CEO, Elon Musk, weighed in with his thoughts. He argued that a combination of a 40% pay raise and a 32-hour work week would be a sure way to drive GM, Ford, and Chrysler bankrupt in the fast lane. But what's driving this potential financial strain on Detroit's automakers? It's not just the strikes, it's also the impact of electric vehicles. The traditional vehicles Detroit is known for are profitable, but the EVs they're starting to produce can't even cover today's pay, let alone the packages under negotiation. We don't have the exact details of the UAW's latest offer, but reports suggest they're seeking a raise in the mid-30% range over the four-year contract. This would add significant costs to the automakers, with estimates suggesting over $2 billion annually for each manufacturer. Besides a raise, the UAW is pushing for a 32-hour working week for 40 hours of pay and a return to defined benefit pensions. However, these demands might be more about negotiating leverage than realistic ambitions. What's truly crucial for UAW members, after the wage increase, are cost of living, adjustments and the abolition of wage tiers. These will add to the automaker's bills, but are not as crippling as the basic wage increase. The biggest challenge for Detroit automakers comes from electric vehicles. For example, Ford's Model E business lost almost $6 for every $10 of EVs sold in the second quarter. Achieving the same profitability as traditional vehicles seems like a distant goal. One potential solution lies in China, as Tesla has shown. Ford wants to license Chinese low-cost battery technology but faces opposition in Washington. They recently paused work on a battery plant in Michigan, awaiting government decisions. But perhaps the biggest unknown factor is how quickly American consumers will embrace EVs in the categories Detroit dominates, like pickup trucks and full-size SUVs. The early numbers are promising, but there's still a long way to go. As the UAW contract negotiations continue, it's clear that Detroit automakers are facing financial challenges, especially in the transition to electric vehicles. The most rational outcome for today's talks could be generous profit sharing on top of an inflation-linked wage increase, ensuring a fair and equitable distribution of the pie, whatever the future holds. Thanks for joining us today as we explored the intricate balance between Detroit's auto workers and the shift towards electric vehicles. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more insightful content on the automotive industry. Until next time, drive safe and stay tuned.